Okay, so let's, uh, no further ado, let's get to our viewer questions now. This person asked three, so I think maybe I'll just lay out one of the questions, and then if we still okay. have time, I'll go back and get to our other questions. They're, they're all okay. good. They're all good. I think any one of these questions, you can probably wrap a show around. So uh, okay. right, we'll try to answer it in five minutes. <laughs> uh, so this Short is, version. <laughs> this is from Fables Moonshine. And the question is, uh, I keep chickens. I feel like more on chicken, communicable diseases, viruses, a time of breakdown of what you can do, if anything, if mm -hmm. you suspect. So I guess the, the viewer is asking for uh, uh, a short list of uh, typical diseases and, and viruses chickens can get and uh, what to do uh, to, to prevent or deal with it when it arises. Sure. Um, so there are quite a few. Um, the ones that I see most commonly are the tumor producing viruses, um, and there are, there are a couple of those that are really important, Merrick's disease, which is a herpes virus, yeah. and then um, avian leukosis, there's a bunch of those, but they are retroviruses, um, and they're passed along different, differently. So the Merrick's disease is pretty um, environmentally stable, unfortunately. It can blow, it also can be shed by the birds that have it in their feather dander. So we can what, blow around on the wind. What does that and mean? What does environmentally stable mean? It means that, uh, it means that you can in, inherit it uh, in a chicken coop or you can, or it can, it can enter your farm from the neighbors and none of the birds need to come with it. So in other words, it's, if you have it on your farm, that you may have it on your farm for some time. Uh, and if it's in your neighborhood, that it may be there for some time. Oh, so it's not, so, just wiped, it's not just wiped out by sunlight for, you know, like some things are just, you know, 12 hours of sunlight and it's dead. This thing can sort of right. stick around. No. For... no, this one sticks around. It's much more uh, stable than that, uh, okay. unfortunately. So that's, those are a couple of them. The avian leukosis virus is not very environmentally stable at all, but unfortunately it is uh, vertically transmitted. And that means that, uh, chicks can get it from their parents uh, in the egg. And right. so that's bad news. Yeah. So, so neither is good to have. Um, they're not uncommon. They're both around. Um, well, leukosis, it varies, but Merix is kind of all over the place, unfortunately, at least here. Uh, and um, the good, and I, again, we could wrap a whole show around just Merix disease. So I won't go on too much more, but you do need to think about that. You can prevent Merrick's disease by getting birds vaccinated at the hatchery. Um, we generally do not vaccinate uh, birds that are running around because it's just hard to do it effectively. And, uh, and it's expensive to do just, um, I would stay away from that. People that I know that have much more experience than I do just don't even touch that topic. I know people try to vaccinate for it, but it's kind of, you know, vaccination is something that you need to do perfectly or not do it at all. Mm. Um, so I prefer to uh, buy birds that are already vaccinated against Merix or to have birds in a setting where no, no other birds have been and where you're not going to have other birds um, arriving. So in other words, um, if you have naive birds that have never been exposed to Merix, they're not vaccinated, you got them from a heritage breeder and they feel quite confident there's no merics in their flock. And you have a new coop and nobody's actually had birds there before. So it's, not, it's like your backyard and you know that it wasn't used before for raising birds. You might be just fine if there are no merics positive birds anywhere near you. I see. So for here in Maine, um, we actually have been uh, very, very blessed by low population density. Uh, in many regions of the state, we're spoiled um, because you can get away with um, raising birds uh, and avoiding a lot of these diseases just because low density again. So low not density. everybody in the area has birds and you're not bringing in new birds all the time and swapping them out and doing this and that. Um, mm. It's kind of like lockdown for birds, right? You know, it's, it's very analogous, very analogous to the whole COVID thing. I see. Um, just a different kind of virus. Um, so in general, to answer this, this um, person's question, the very best thing is biosecurity. And that means, um, you know, quarantining any new birds, not having other birds have any contact with your birds, 
And another concept is all in, all out. That's an old concept, but it means that if you're going to have a flock of birds, buy them all at one time, especially as eggs or as chicks from a, um, a, a you know, a, a hatchery that you trust and that you know doesn't have disease problems and keep them alone. Don't bring them to shows. Don't, you know, don't swap in and out, things like that. And then when you've had the birds long enough that you've gotten the things that you need, or want from that flock, then disperse, the, either terminate that flock or disperse that flock, but put a right. distinct end to that group of birds on your farm and then clean and disinfect the housing and um, including letting it sit empty for a while, just as uh, Greg pointed out, um, time, air and uh, sunlight do a lot to help disperse viruses. Um, so that, and resources about biosecurity, there are some really nice resources available um, on the USDA.gov uh, site uh, about biosecurity for the birds. Um, and uh, they go into much more detail and are much better at that concept. But I just want that concept to be out there because to me, those are the most robust ways to prevent uh, 